Let's talk about sound. We're going to see sound from two perspectives. We're going to see sound from the generation. How do we, uh, how do we generate sound? And then we're going to look at sound and how we perceive it and how the perception happens. Our microcontroller is going to control. It'll use our DAC to convert the digital to analog, and then we'll use a speaker to generate the sound. The sound is a air pressure, and so we're going to have pieces of air at high pressure, followed by pieces at low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. And this sound is going to, this pressure wave is going to traverse the air. And our ears are going to perceive it. The eardrum will oscillate and will touch um, the nerves in our ear and our brain will perceive the sound. So sound perceived this way, visualized this way, is change in air pressure. Yes. And if we look at this air pressure, we can visualize it as an oscillation of pressure. And so we can see that at any given spot, the air pressure is going to oscillate with respect to time. The other way that we can perceive sound or understand sound is the fact that this pressure wave actually travels. And so this pressure is also oscillates in space. So the wave actually propagates away from the generator to the perceiver. So now that we looked at what sound is, let's look at the properties of sound. Yes. First we know that sound can be visualized as a wave. And so there are properties of this wave. One of the obvious properties is the period of this wave and one over this period is the frequency. And when we talk about sound, we define this frequency as the pitch, high pitch or a low pitch. The second property of sound or any wave is the amplitude. In the context of sound, we call this loudness. So if a sound is much louder, it will be bigger. That is correct. So let's take a, a simple note, a note, a sound that all of us can relate to. An A note on a piano or a keyboard. This A note is going to oscillate at 440 cycles per second. So we'll call it 440 hertz. If we were to go down an octave to the octave below, we get another A note and it oscillates at one half of that frequency or 220 hertz. If we go one octave up, then it'll oscillate twice that or 880 hertz. So we can have notes in between things. Let's look at some notes that are uh, useful um, and make a nice sound. Um, the note G, which is at 392 hertz. The note E, which is 329.6 hertz. And the note C, which is 261.6 hertz you will see that this, these numbers have a relationship when you do the lab for this class, this particular module. Yeah, and the lab is going to use these four notes to generate a piano. So we saw sound can be described by three properties. The frequency of sound, the amplitude or the loudness of sound, and there's a third property which is the shape of sound. So if you wanted to listen to a trumpet, you would see that the trumpet wave 
looks different than the sine wave that we drew in the last picture. The shape of this sound is different. It still oscillates, but it's not as regular as the pure tone we did in the last slide. So let's put all of these things together. We're going to build a system that will produce sound by converting a digital signal to an analog sample. We'll hook up a speaker that will produce sound that we can listen to. All right, let's go.